All right, we're here with another series. Uh, of course, if you didn't catch the first series in this Group D of DreamHack Masters Last Chance, the last chance to get, of course, points for that World Championship circuit, the ESL Pro Tour. Uh, to go back and watch the Serral versus DRG opening match of this group. And you've had your chance. Spoilers, if you didn't already go back and watch that, guys. Up here in the top left, we've got NC Sports Serral. An unfortunate loss in his first match versus Dong Ray Gu. A big upset, but I mean, he, he literally, he just, he absolutely dropped the ball, made some huge mistakes in the second game. Third game was fair and square. Just got caught out by a timing attack and couldn't quite hold on, but he's now facing off a Terran player, a very good Terran player, a player who he can fall apart a little. He's definitely no Maru or Clem in the mechanical department. But if he gets his Widow Mines in, he's going to keep getting his Widow Mines in, excuse me, and he's going to keep dropping you and dropping you. And you give him that momentum and he'll look, good as, uh, look as good as the best. This is Dream. Uh, especially famous for popularizing Mass Widow Mine drops as an opening, where there was a period where he was always opening up second factory before getting any extra barracks and just going Drilling Claws, triple widow mine production and he would just basically play it kind of like the the terran verse protoss strategy where you never stop widow mine dropping and he was just like i'm gonna widow mine drop you and then i'm gonna widow mine drop you and widow mine drop you and then he'd go like four command centers off three barracks and his marine count was so low so he was very vulnerable to actually getting killed by frontal attacks but dream was basically abusing a meta where no one was doing big frontal attacks to the Terran because it didn't work versus normal Terran. So Dream's a guy, he will make weird little meta adjustments to abuse if he can. Now this SCV is going to scout and it will realize that this was a pool first opening. The Zerglings, I like the way Serral splits that. He hides four and he sends two to deal with this. He says, look, I know seeing the hatchery timing tells you to leave your Reaper at home anyway. So Dream should be staying at home with this Reaper. He's going to go across the map, which is super greedy. He does see the Zerglings though, Serral, with a bit of a, a basic bitch uh, Zergling path there. Notice he's just trying to run away, he's just trying to waste the Reaper's time with those Zerglings. The other two are going to hide, he's not going to go in for the command center. And this six Zergling build hasn't really paid off for Serral, it does allow him of course to keep the Reaper pinned back, but not much else. Factory into second gas at home behind this, so not a very quick second gas. I think Dream might have been thinking of going a third command center, but he's worried about a roach attack on such a small map. To, uh, so you can see Bunker there. The second gas allows him to go into Banshees a lot quicker, as well as build maybe a tech lab on this factory if he's super worried. Now, I, I, I doubt he does that, but who knows? Maybe he does build two Marines, tech lab, and then swaps them over once he realizes there's no roach attack. We'll see. Dream, though, doesn't see any roaches coming yet at three minutes, and he says, nah, I think we're fine. So I would love to see him... I mean, it doesn't matter if you finish the bunker or not, right? Because you can always just sell it for the same amount as cancelling it. And the Reaper going to pull back as well. Got Barracks Factory starboard here. And we'll see what goes on. Reaper there. We've got some Hellions moving out. Marine patrolling in the main base. Hellions on the way as well. And here we go. Hellions starting to move on forwards. Seeing what he can spot. And Serral. He's just adding his fourth and fifth queen. He's going to want to drone that third base up. That third base is kind of delayed, man. That's just the, the price you pay with a pool first build order, isn't it? i got to remember to start opening up these minerals in this map, guys. I always forget to do that. And... It just gives you an extra access rather than just having to go here and here, which is very far apart. Nice sacrifice coming in from the back door. Serral, of course, snuck that down the right flank, and he will see no Banshees on the way. It's just a Viking, Hellions. He knows the Stim is building. So in this scenario, you can skip your Spore Crawlers completely because you know, hey, there is no Liberator coming in just yet. There could be one after this. But you can cut that corner, and Serral is indeed going to do just that. He's going to drone that third base. Dream, though, remember, had a pretty good opening. And if he can find a bit of damage with the Hellions, pick off another Overlord or two with the Vikings, uh, or the Viking, that'd be great. He's going to have a very quick Marine Medivac follow-up, and that can be very effective. He's going to go for that Creep Tumor. Well worth it there. And Overlord should go down if he doesn't want to transfuse. He transfuses at the last second. I think that's worth it for Serral. Especially if it baits the Viking in to take more damage. Zerging's getting ready for a little bit of a run by. Two Hellions guarding though. And the Marine does shoot that Zerging down before it gets any more scouting info. 
He's already going up to five barracks. His dream of single e -bit. I was a two base all in. He didn't have enough. I, I didn't even realize how. I was like, those barracks are very early. I thought he had a third command center down. He's actually doing a two base, five racks, bio tank, all in, guys. This is a massive two base timing attack. Now, with this base setup, I think he wants to set up tank here, here, and then just work his way around these angles. He might come from the very north and try to siege this angle, actually. That could also be very effective. Maybe even put a tank there and up there. The Hellion's trading pretty well so far. So what he's going to do, guys, is he'll put the tanks inside the medevacs as well. So he's going to probably push with his first two tanks to try to get it started. But he could wait a little bit longer if he wants. Um, first two medevacs, second tank queuing up. Lots of marines on the way. Vikings denying scouting. Serral still, I mean, first of all, he saw a full depot wall. Which means, why is there no third command center in the wall with this sort of opening? And now he sees no third landed or anything like that. I mean, Serral should realize that he should do nothing but Massling Bane off three or four gases. And you can see one, two, three, four gases. No gases on the third. I'd like to see a macro hatchery and a fourth base from him because otherwise he's going to struggle to spend his money. But he's droning. Even though, even a single drone worries me there. Even a single drone. If you just Massling Bane off 60 drones, you make your Bane speed, which he's rushed towards. You get a Carapace upgrade here, which he really should get a move on with. He should be able to stop this attack. But right now, down about 20 army supply. Push is coming right, right through the middle of the map. He doesn't even pick up his tanks. No secrecy, no fanciness at all here from Dream. And he's not rallying out just yet. He's worried about a run by taking him out. Liberator's joining this as well. The tanks are going to push right through the middle. I do like that tank position on the right, but the rocks went down. Ooh, nice move by Serral. A few lings do get aggroed into their death. Serral, where is the... Re he should be cutting off the reinforce. I really think he should set up for a full flank on this army with at least 10, 15 Zerglings minimum. The Hellions, though, are guarding from that. Marines up front. Focuses down one slow Baneling. Another 15, 20 seconds till Bane Speed's ready. That's going to be a huge turn around. Serral does not want to fight till Bane Speed. He's got a flank ready in the top right. But I'd like to see him also flank from the south side when push comes to shove. He's got to be careful attacking around the corners into the enemy's kill zones. Ooh, bad fight for Serral. Bad, bad fight for Serral. That is a disaster. His unit's accidentally pathing down two separate uh, angles. And Serral may be still a little bit tilted from that earlier series verse. DRG, the queen's here trying to transfuse, trying to hang on. We've got Bane Ling, Ling on the top left. These queens transfusing each other, seeing what the hell can go on. This is a great push from Dream. Those Hellions in the back line are such a problem because normally surrounding those tanks with Zerglings is the key. He's not going to be able to do that. Not to mention this Liberator is a huge problem. He's attacking almost all from one side. Oh, Bane Ling's on the south, but they go in the wrong angle. The Marines completely evade it and several absolutely dominated, wiped off the face of this map. Damn, unable to, he didn't cut off the reinforce and he never set up a full surround. Serral in 2018 was all about that surround. These days, his flanks not as perfect. And we saw that one on the right, unfortunately pathing in two angles, Dream taking the first. Well, that's a way to start the series uh, or just a really well refined two base timing attack. And you know what? It fit the map. It's a short, medium rush distance map, that Berlin grad. It's got some good angles. And I really love the Liberator Siege angle, the tanks covered by the Hellions. I mean, that was that was great play. That was really, really, really well done. And uh, I'm just so impressed. Taking a map off Serral, man. A great way to start this series. It's Dream. Representing Team Envy. Of course, Ents Esports Serral up here, guys. He has gone to the land of Tilt. Now, we've all been there before. He's going to do the six Zerglings again. The reason is Dream likes to gamble. He likes to cut corners. And Dream is doing exactly what Dream does, guys. Dream has said, hey, ISCV scouted. I caught you going pool first. There's no way you'd do that again. I'm not going to SCV scout. And I'm going to send my Reaper straight across. The problem is Dream does this every single time. Dream doesn't randomize what he does. And this is something Raynor had this exact read on Dream in Pigsty Festival. And he did the same thing. Pool first, six Urglings, pretty much every single game. And Dream always does the gamble where he's like, oh, if you did it once, you're not going to do it again. And he'll always skip the scout. And that's the problem with how Dream plays is he predictably cuts corners and assumes you're going to do things. And he's in trouble for it already. Is he though? Actually, no, he's trying to play it safe. He's hunting for the Zergling. So he's trying to play it safe. Does he? If he goes back with the Reaper, it's actually fine. And he's going to do it. He's, he's going back with the Reaper. 
Well done, mate. Well done. The Zerglings are hiding, though. He, he's like, hey, the Reapers should have arrived by now. If the Reaper hasn't arrived, the Zerglings can't go in. But you know what? That means the Command Center will finish. This is actually totally fine. And Dream goes third CC really early. I love it. I actually love it. You know what? I was going to shit on Dream for sending the Reaper straight across the map, knowing, you know, we knew, of course, one Marine would not be able to defend the Command Center from six Zerglings. He'd have to pull eight or nine SCVs, maybe 10 to fight the Zerglings, lose a couple SCVs, lose a lot of mining time. As it is, the Zerglings are still going to come in before the aliens are out. And look at that. Three Zerglings on that reactor. I would have liked him continuing to hit that, but it looks like he's decided instead he wants to keep those Zerglings alive. So, wastes mining time on these three SCVs. He maybe gets the low hit point one. Doesn't look like he should be able to, especially if these depots lower and those Hellions drive out. Good micro by Dream so far. Stopping Serral in his tracks. I was about to shit on Serral. Uh, on Dream, sorry, for being predictable. Guess what? He's evolved. He's evolved. <laughs> uh, Serral now building lots of queens, drones, macroing on up. That third base once again delayed to just after three minutes due to that six Zergling opening. And that's a third gas. Whoa! What is this? Dream's mecking it. Dream's mecking, guys. Haha. <laughs> oh my. We're going to see extra factories go down in the near future, are we? Wow. So he's going Hellions. He's going to go Vikings. And I think he's going to... Oh, you think he's about to go a fusion core there. He's about to put a fusion core down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, he's going fusion core, right? But seeing that SCV, does Serral realize? Let's go to Serral's camera and see if there's any signs of him realizing this is Battlecruiser. This is really friggin' cool for Dream. It doesn't actually have to be mech if it's BC. It could be BC in... Uh, sorry. If it's Battlecruiser, it doesn't have to be mech. It could be BC into bio is what I'm trying to say there, but stumbling over my words because I'm excited because Dream's playing a very different and interesting game. Serral right now, he hit a pretty big supply block on 58, and that's actually a very amateur thing, guys. When you send your Overlord into Sacrifice, you always build an extra two Overlords, because you know that one's going to die almost every time, right? There's always going to be a Marine, maybe a Viking pop out. Like, you expect your Overlord to, to, to die. So Serral getting supply block that hard on 58 was really messy, and he's actually focused on his Queens, an early Baneling Nest, and defensive Banelings way earlier than he needed to. I don't know why this Baneling Nest and these Banelings are so fast. What's he doing? Serral has a serious misread on what's going on in this game. I think... Oh! He thought that SCV was going to build an armory. Okay, I get it, guys. So Serral thought that was going to be an armory. Then he Because he saw, remember, that the SCV going to that... Hit, this is a hidden building position. There's no, there's no reason you'd build anything but an armory or a fusion core at that point. Serral assumed it was an armory, so he's made... Banelings preemptively. He's built extra Zerglings, and now he's like, hey, where's the Hellbat timing? He's now building spores going, oh shit, this is not that. And indeed, the Battlecruiser will be out in 30 seconds. It's not a very quick Battlecruiser, but guess what? Third's already down, double gas already on it, triple factory coming up behind this. Very cool build order. And it's going to be BC Mac for Dream. He's getting Yamato, which means we're going to see at least two, probably three Battlecruisers. Now, three Battlecruisers is basically the Imperial official uh, of this game, except it doesn't collect tax from your own buildings. It collects tax from your opponent by frigging killing stuff for free. Thank you guys for dropping the cheers. For those who are wondering on YouTube why there's fart noises, whenever you drop 100 bits, it does a fart in my, in my stream. Because I'm an adult. And, and I like to give people the opportunity to pay money to make fart noises. So it only cost a dollar, literally a dollar fifty or something like that to make that fart noise. I hope you're happy, YouTube. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. BC runs in. Hellions run in. Uh oh, uh oh. Seven drones already going down. Make it eight. Make it 12. Uh oh, Banelings are going to get a decent hit. But dude, the Hellions are doing all right versus those Zerglings. They're going to clean these lings up. The Battlecruiser almost dies, though. That's a problem. The Battlecruiser was not microed very well during that. But even more drones go down. A transfuse even kept that drone alive. That one drone. Holy crap. Was absolutely had his life saved despite all that adversity. Going to come in and grab maybe another one. Quick Evo Chamber trick there but great damage to start things off. If Dream keeps his macro going, that should be great. Now, I've actually been thinking recently, and I, remind me on stream, if you guys are watching, to experiment. I want to try skipping the armories until after I'm on five factories every game of mech for like a month and just try to have more units out and see if I can use, like, because I just feel like upgrades aren't that important with mech. Like, they definitely matter a lot in, like, if your opponent's going muters, like Sarah is, armor upgrades become really important. 
Uh, the plus two attack helps Thors a lot because they go from two shotting, uh, from three shotting muters to two shotting them. There's like a few interactions like that which do really matter, right? But if it's like roaches and ravages versus tanks, it's like, eh, having an attack upgrade's nice, but it's not that important. And here we go, Hellion's coming forward. The queen's gonna get bounced as well. And three bases are fully up. The thing is, it's seven and a half minutes and no fourth command center started. If Dream wants to continue his growth and just win this game by being it, he should drop a fourth command center right now. And that's kind of the correct thing to do because he's already on 69 SCVs. And as much as I love the power of memes, it'd be even better if he just continues that growth. The Battlecruiser should be Yamatoing one of those queens. He, he did tell it to Yamato one, but they got out of vision. Hellion's in the top, but nice Zergling ambush. And those Hellions ain't getting out of there. He even bounces the Banelings into the Hellions, funnily enough. Muters get the turret just before it finishes, but there we go. The other SCVs pull. The Muters will go around, though, and this is very important. Guys, that fourth command center is on the way over at the third base, but he's taking some nice economic damage here. Uh, Dream is taking that damage from Serral, I should say. A couple Muters going down. Good Widow Mine hit. And it looks like those Muters are going to have to pull out now. Serral's on a pretty basic composition right now. He's got 10 Muters, which are not great versus Battlecruisers at all, guys. I mean, he could fight, but oh, a bit of a mess up there. And even in a Yamato, getting another 200 resources of value. And that's what I talk about with the tax, guys. The Yamato, once every 70 seconds or whatever the cooldown is on that, you're going to be able to Yamato 71 seconds. So once every minute, 10 seconds, the Battlecruiser gets to kill a unit basically for free. And anytime you think you're going to kill a Battlecruiser, it teleports home, repairs up for very cheap cost, and comes back into the fight. So the Battlecruisers take a long time to get the value, but they only cost, they cost 700 resources. Each Yamato kills 150 resources worth with a Queen, 200 resources. If it's a Mutalisk, and if it's a Roach, it's 200 resources as well, 100 minerals and 100 gas. So... Uh, it, it, over three Yamatos, it, it almost pays for itself. Obviously, they're killing units. Otherwise, they're forcing spores. They're doing other things. So the Battlecruiser's job is to force your opponent to have a, a certain amount of their supply in units that just aren't that great. Mutalisks or Corruptors, not that good outside of that one role of killing the Battlecruisers. Muters, of course, a bit more multi-purpose as a harassment unit, but very bad against Widow Mines. In combat, if there's at least two Thors in splash damage mode and some Widow Mines spread throughout the fight, Muters will get absolutely wiped. As long as you've got some Widow Mines landing some splash damage on them, they, they become very bad at fighting. The Battlecruisers, once again, 150 mineral tax, 150 mineral tax. And if you engage on them, they can focus fire as well. He's going to just teleport home though. He says like, that's too many Muters. Let's not waste time microing this. At best, he would have just forced Serral to pull Mutalisks back one at a time. But now Swarmo is coming. Guys, Swarmo is Muto. Oh man, this is a fucking cool style. I, the only time I beat Tasia in a random ladder game, never played him in a tournament back in the day, <laughs> was with Muta Swarmos. That was a much better Swarmos than this Swarmos. I mean, it didn't throw Flying Locust, it did a little bit less damage, but it shot twice as often. Um, that style worked because the Locusts were endless. Now, with this style, the problem is you have a very supply... It's it's not very supply like like these units chew up so much supply. Swarmos are three supply each. I mean, it's cool because they can throw locusts, they're good versus Thors, they're good versus tanks. They're not bad versus Widow Mines, but Hellbats ruin them. They just evaporate the locusts before they can do anything. So to make up for the inefficiency of that, not to mention the muters, which are just not great combat units, they're more of a harassment unit, you're gonna need banelings. So the banelings, if they can clear the hellbats, clear the, the widow mines. The Locust can just trade really well. So notice he's trying to pair them up here, but he's a little worried about that Widow Mine. And those Widow Mines, nice spread on the Zerglings. But look at that, the Banelings are trying to take him out. Great Widow Mine there. Good lift on the Command Center from Dream, though. And he's got a triple Battlecruiser run by on the left side of the map, trying to come forward. The Swarm Hosts do put pressure on your opponent in order to attack you. Now, notice Serral here, realizing 16 Swarm Hosts is such a cost on his supply. He's staying on a low work account. 75 work is very low against the four base mecking Terran. Dream, get out of there. Teleport, teleport, bro. Okay, didn't manage to get the third teleport off. Uh, he could have kept shooting for a little bit, but he just gets two mutilists, gets out. So not the best usage of his BCs there. Best case, you run in, you kill some drones and spores, then the muters come, you yamato them, and then teleport home. But if he keeps it up with the battle cruisers, you will eventually see Serral get infestors out. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see pathogen glands in the near future. Just two or three infestors. And what he'll do is he'll try to hide 
those burrowed on the edge of the map, and the next time the battlecruisers come over, he'll neural them, he'll teleport them into his mutalisks and spore crawlers, and he'll shoot them down. So that's one of the ways of actually getting rid of those battlecruisers, removing them from the map, and at that point, you can change your composition. He's actually on 22 muters, continuing to upgrade them. It's a lot of supply in muters. Serral needs to always have a lot of banelings, because if he doesn't have banelings, Dream can literally just shove right through him. And already Dream pushing forward forces those locusts out. The banelings trying to just engage on this. There's not that many aliens, but I think Dream says, hey, it's time to push. Dream has seven factories, two reactors, and one, two, three, four tech labs by the look of it. Must be five tech labs. I just can't see them all right now. I'm blind, apparently. Battlecruisers on the left, push down the middle. And if you can push in, guess what? Long cooldown on those locusts. More banelings need to get made right now. He's only got seven banelings. He's trying to make more zerglings. He needs banelings to clear the hellbat so his units can do their job. Muters come in. Few of them die to some Thor shots. Remember, there's no Widow Mines in this. So they could technically fight the Thor's front on. It would be a very close fight though. Queens get absolutely blitzed by the battlecruisers. Big fight on the front. Hellbats run from the banelings and they turn to try and fight the locusts. The next round of banelings will clear out all their hellbats and there's more locusts behind that. And this is where things get problematic. Just one blue flame hellbat on either flank. They do roast most of the locusts. More aliens rallying in. Can he do any more here though? The battlecruisers teleport in to join the fight. The Thor goes down and he's going to lose all of his battlecruisers. As I said, where's the Widow Mines rallying into that fight? He didn't have that many Thor and the battlecruisers teleporting here was not a good choice. He, he does keep his tanks alive, get some of them home, but he loses a lot of battlecruisers for that. And Dream right now is in a little bit of a struggle. Honestly, I think Serral's composition is very cute, but I don't think Dream's playing this correctly. I actually think Gumiho would be winning this game uh, if you put him at the 10-11 at the minute mark in Dream's shoes. I, I really feel Gumiho would rip this apart. Maybe that's just because I'm a... Gumiho fanboy. I don't think Gumiho would have made it to the same point in the map as well as Dream did. Oh, big volley on the muters. How many actually died though? 22 muters have died this game. A lot of them got weak, but they did not die. 2-2 two, two versus no armor upgrade. So they should be getting two shot. But I think what happened there is he uh, only took one Thor splash on each group and they caught maybe the edge of some Widow Mine splash or something else as well. Zerglings do find the fifth base going up on the left and Dream... He's really got to consolidate. He can't be leaving any openings against this kind of small scale, uh, you know, run buys of muters, run buys of zerglings. These are these are units that are a big problem for him. Uh oh, he's got to defend this wave. Widow mines are looking good, but Loke is so good against Widow mines tanks. Thors, it's just the hellbats. The hellbats are really the most important thing for holding strong here. But it's so hard to balance your composition right now is Dream. The Thors are going to get some big shots off, though. Serral gets a nice Locust Wave, but that is a Muta overcommitment. I, I want to say that's a Muta overcommitment, and indeed, it does look like it is at the tail end of that. Units lost tab, about 4,000 resources ahead for Dream. So he is in the lead there. Fourth Command Center going down the left side. And uh, I still only see six factories, but wait, one, two, it's three reactors! Ooh, so it's four tech labs, three reactors. That's what I was getting confused. So he can build six Hellions and Widow Mines, whichever ratio of Hellion, Hellion Widow Mine, but he can build six of those at a time and they only take 21 seconds to build. So he literally can build six times three, 18 Hellions or Widow Mines a minute. That is insane. And you know what? It makes sense because you need Hellbats versus the Locusts, Hellions versus the Locusts, you need Widow Mines versus the Muters. And Widow Mines aren't bad versus the Ling Bane either by any means. So this is actually a really cool uh, respect for just how important the reactor units are against the composition that Serral's making. Treem has a pretty good army, doesn't take many losses there. Looks like he got a couple of drone kills behind it. Serral, remember, is playing this off not a large economy because if he builds another 10, 15 drones, he just doesn't have enough supply for the Ling Bane. If he doesn't have the Ling Bane, he can't stop the frontal push. You can see he's now swapping over to Ravages, which is very cute, but Ravages are also one of the most supply inefficient units in the game. Three supply for a unit that has the stats of a Roach. It has a little bit more range, a little bit less hit points, but it's three supply, 100 minerals, 100 gas. Now the Ravager Bile is very good if you can drag the game out, if you can land it on tanks and Thors, but is he going to be able to do that? These muters causing a ruckus. We see that a Thor on its own is the least efficient unit in the game versus muters. As silly as that sounds, it is so bad. 
It's good for forcing the mutas to spread out, but a Thor in splash damage mode doesn't actually kill anything. Great Biles there cleaning up a big wave of siege tanks. Army on the left pushing in, but that just isolates your units. I mean, you'll kill the hatchery if you focus fire. You gotta focus fire that hatchery. Oh no, he's gonna lose these Thors. He's gotta dodge the Biles. Gets hit by two corrosive Biles. He will focus down the hatchery. And those Thors should focus down the Ravages. You can kill at least a few of them. Notice the Thors do gun down the Ravages with just two shots. So not bad focus fire there from Dream. Does take down a bunch of them. The Mutas in the main being a pain in the ass. The Mule does drop to repair that. Going to need to replace some turrets here. Now remember, he never got the building armor. That's part of why his turrets didn't do that well. He also doesn't have the high sec auto tracking, which gives them an extra range. Nidus now being used here at multiple angles, and this is not a planetary, which means even a few locusts going to cause a bit of pain. And having to lift these orbitals, Dream is on the defensive. Both players' economy is, is a little bit average. It's, it's just not all that powerful. You can see it's been back and forth for the last few minutes of this game. Still, no turrets being replaced in the main. There's a cyclone out now. My response is always to go heavy cyclones uh, when I'm playing against Swarmos. It's fascinating to see that because of the heavy muta presence, Dream has not done that. He's only got two cyclones out now. Obviously, cyclones aren't great versus Zerglings, but with the Hellions, they'll be fine. They're not great versus Muters, but they're okay there. It's interesting to see which direction he goes now. Roaches are going to come back. These Hellions, if they could kill 10, 20 drones, that's a big pickoff. Oh, come on. Dream not microing straight away. And he does miss a couple of volleys. Only going to kill a couple of workers. Meanwhile, Locusts on the fourth. Oh, it's going to fall. No, it's not going to fall. Oh, it barely survives. Nine workers do go down in the middle of the map. Dream says, F this, I can't let these Nidus Worm Swarmos just keep hitting me. I've got to push into him. But he's so light on Siege Tanks. And this is where the maneuverability of the Ravages, their ability to do hit and run, to do fighting retreats is so good. You know, the, the way they work, it's, it, it's it, I feel like it's kind of like, hey, unload, launch some rockets, launch, you know, lay down some machine gun fire. And the moment, you know, and then just pick up, unpack, hop in, your, hop in your, your APCs and drive back to the next ambush point. It's kind of the way the Ravages work. They're just like, they never stand and fight, because when they do, they look like the biggest piece of shit in the game. And the question is, how do you as Dream force him to stand and fight? Well, with a giant locust flank, Dream is going to be in big trouble. Those locusts did so much damage, they tanked so much. Now, when he does come down to stand and fight, the Ravages will mostly fall. But he's already taken out the core of that army. And that was perfect. If you get a locust flank on that army, combine that with the Ravages and the harassment in the bottom right, that was a... Beautiful anti-mech game from Serral. Dream made him fight for it, though. But Serral shows that he's one of the most calm and collected players versus mech. And Muta Swarmhost? Holy shit, dude. Bloody cool. All right, a hard loss there. Another map which is not the worst for mech. Will he try it again? I'd love to see it. I really do think losing the battle cruisers and getting overwhelmed with no Widow Mines left in his army by those Mutas, excuse me, burping like a maniac um, was was one of his big mistakes and that's why i think sometimes you want to have a few widow mines behind your army so they don't die to the banelings but they're there so you can fall back to them in the case of the mutas coming in for a cleanup anyway this is team envy's dream going gas first oh he's so sick i love our dream he's so creative man he just does lots of cool little twists and turns on his openings gas first opening gonna allow him to get a very quick factory up so i think he's gonna go probably for an early hellion dive i think he's gonna go for a two or four hellion dive very very early on up here in the top left, this is Serral, going for a hatch first, representing NC Sports. And for those who don't know, he has recently been hailed the king of Finland, or at least his town, Pornainen. And he's setting up the uh, settlement of... Sorry, uh, I'm stupid. I, I was I was on a dumb tangent that I was making up, but... I st How cruel are Protoss? They don't even give enough water for the shark. It's half sticking out of the water. Give it a little bit more water to swim in, Jesus. And look at this. What kind of a zoo chamber is that? They barely have room to move. Oh, Protoss are such racist pieces of shit. They're like, these lesser species have mouths. They're so disgusting. <laughs> Keep them in a cage. Protoss are actually, this is like actually the thing as well. You know, like Protoss are kind of the good guys and kind of awesome. And they're kind of better than humans. And they're, they're like really noble but they're also evil shits. It's kind of like the elves, right? They are space elves, right? You know, like some of the elves are all like Elrond and they're all so good and they want to help everyone. And then there's ones who are just creepy as shit and selfish and psychopathic. And that's that's kind of the Rohana. 
It's like, even in, in the StarCraft 1 campaigns, right? The Protoss are like, oh, don't fight with those dirty humans and, and don't do Thanks that. And, you know, even even if it means the death of our people, we have to just follow tradition blindly because we're absolute nincompoops, you know? I, I really feel that's like, that's the whole thing with Protoss, man. They're, they're just, they think they're better than everyone. They got their Spear of Adun down there. So apparently this is one of the ships that's flying nearby the Spear of Adun, I guess. Um... I, 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 I just think they're speciesist, okay? They're racist, they're speciesist, they're not my favorite. Anyways, Dream is, is there's no Protoss here today, so. Mag Diddy with the 27 months, thank you very much, mate. Uh, we've got a second gas there coming up. It's not as quick compared to the factory as normal one, but look at that, guys. Two minutes 45, already two Hellions started up. So he's going to be able to do a three minute 30 quad Hellion dive. And if you're not realizing how early those Hellions are, that can really surprise you. And the Overlords are kind of far back, so he might not spot just how fast those Hellions are. The Reaper, of course, did stay at home here. This is his first scout across the map. Once again, keeping that Reaper for safety in the early game and only now bringing it across the map. Um, remember, guys, Terran, of course, much more noble than Protoss. Uh, they're definitely not a bunch of inbred space convicts. That have been sent to the far corner of the known universe. Um, definitely not. Definitely not a bunch of inbred, inbred, weird, creepy, uh, incestuous uh, human bogans. Zergling's on top of the ramp, but guys, Ling Speed won't be done for another 20 seconds. Hellions are going to be coming across. Yeah, it's a four. He left these Hellions at home. So Dream wants to do a four Hellion dive, but he kept these Hellions at home longer than he should have. So I can't really get behind this opening for Dream. He has not utilized those Hellions nearly as quickly as he could have. He could have been here 20 seconds ago. He's going in late. Bit of a slippy, slippy, sloppy mistake for Dream. Link Speed's going to kick in as he runs past. Only three Zerglings, but there's 10 more popping at this moment. And that should be enough. He gets one drone, two drones. Oh, but I don't think that's enough, man. He needs it. Oh, two drones that was re a huge mistake he should have had a much bigger window to do damage but you saw those hellions just sitting at home for a little while and dream his whole opening is based around getting those hellions across the map 10 20 seconds faster and and getting in before those zerglings are ready he messes it up and now he's just going to be on the defensive i mean he did force a lot of zerglings at least it's not like it's game over by any means but I gotta, it's just disappointing when the whole point of the gas first is hitting that really early and he hits it at the same time as a normal opening. Great surround by Serral, gets the Marines, gets a Hellion. This Hellion gets it, get in the mineral line, bro. That Hellion should have taken refuge in the mineral line. Uh, this is, I don't like the micro from Dream here. He, if you pull into the mineral line, your SCVs will body block really easily. But Serral with some great control gets some really good damage. And it feels like after going to Tilt Town earlier in this group, this may be the start of the recovery. Serral's got to keep it together. He's got to stay focused and calm. Does he realize this is bio play? Yes, he does. He sees the extra barracks. He sees the stim on the way. And Dream now. Is he playing a two-base push again? No third command center. And he's seen the three barracks up really early. He's seen the engineering bay. I mean, Serral. I don't think he dies to that, that, that same build from map one a second time around. Where do you even push on such a big map? I think this is where you'd like to get siege tanks sieged up so that you can obviously reach this huge area. But getting there is a completely different story. Serral, he's got his three bases up. He's going to go four, four gases one more time. Baneling speed is going to start up immediately. If Serral realizes the trouble that he might be in, he should absolutely be focusing on Bane speed. And he does. Lots of Zerglings in production. Overlord Speed's going to confirm right now. He's like, you don't have a sneaky third, do you? He sees nothing down there. He's going to try and rotate into that main base. He's actually going to morph an Overseer. Now, for those who don't know, Overlords have zero armor. I believe an Overseer has one. And, of course, it's much faster. And with Overlord Speed, super fast. This thing shooting NOS out its ass. It does indeed have that extra armor. It's going to fly back over. And he's gonna go, yeah, Marines, tanks, you're building for a push. This is absolutely transparent. And honestly, this time around, it feels like the opening did not go well for Dream. He did not get the damage he was looking for with the four Hellion run by. He slipped up on that one. And his follow-up has been completely scouted. The Overseer coming through the main and seeing everything. The push is now moving out. Serral, he's got three more Queens building. He's gonna go 10 Queens. I absolutely hate the mass queen response to this sort of build i think it's much better to have your lings forward be cutting off the rally setting your flanks up all that sort of stuff that rather than going mass queen serral though he's just going to pull every queen to the front replace the three queens it's not a bad call 
I just always prefer mobile units and extra hatchery production over the Mass Queen. The Queens are fantastic tanks, though. If you can get them up front tanking the damage, that's great. Serral is going to set up a proper flank. He messed that up in game one in this series. This time, he's going to do it very well. Pervert mode is enabled on that Overseer. Presents it, though, to get killed. And oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Serral, though. Doesn't run in. Oh my god, Dream so slow on the response. The Bailings were there to blow up the wall anyway, so it wouldn't really have mattered. Tank will siege on the high ground, but those SCVs are going goodbye. And this was just a complete shutout. I mean, this was a great game one, a cool game two. And Cyril then got angry, and he literally has just backhanded Dream out of this game. I mean, Dream's trying to do damage, but these Queen's more than a match for these Marines and this Liberator. It's only a matter of time until that Zergling flank comes in from behind. As I said, this is the position you're looking for with those tanks. It's a great angle, but if those Zerglings can flank in from behind and get on those tanks, that's going to seal it. The Queen's are going to take out the Lib. Queen's even able to hit the tank from the high ground, and the Ling Bane clears those tanks. Dream is pushed back. Dream's natural, only now getting back to mining. He's going to grab his rally. He's going to go for one more round, but this is a dominating play from several great scouting and he's absolutely shut it out i've been here many times before you're going for a bit of a gambly attack and when you also commit so hard to those early four hellions it slows everything down gas first does not get these extra barracks up as quickly as a normal build order a barracks gas opening changes things a little bit and look at this round three or round two, sorry, of giant Zergling runbys. Now, not only does this wrap up the reinforce, forces those guys to consolidate at home, it also is a fantastic flank for coming in on the tank. The Banelings going after these Marines. The Marines with a great spready. No Zerglings on the tank right now. But there's just too much Zerg. And Serral wins the losers match. He's going to go through to the deciding match of Group D.